Good morning. I'm Taylor Jackson here from a garage in Naples, Florida. And uh, I'm in the garage because it's the easiest place to kind of build my temporary studio. Uh, the, the thing that I like about doing these podcasts the most is that I can kind of do them wherever I am because for the most part I'm recording on my iPhone, which I always have with me. So um, maybe that is, uh, I guess, kind of testament to what we talked about a little bit yesterday um, with creating uh, muscle memory and just doing things over and over again. That if you If you do feel a little bit like you're uncomfortable in front of a camera or uncomfortable speaking, um, like recording a podcast to just start doing it and just keep doing it often and you will get a lot better. Uh, so far, um, I guess tangent switching, switching notes here and, uh, book more writing 2019 is out until Tuesday and the response so far has been absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much to everyone that has picked up the course and as well as, um, everybody just given like me great feedback on the course as well and the things that they've liked. And, uh, the one thing uh, that I'm kind of getting constant feedback about is how split the decision is for people, um, either trying to, uh, there's a, you get your selection of one of the bonus courses that it comes with. And I would say half, half people are going for the advanced wedding photography marketing course. And then the other half are going for the travel the world for nearly free, how to make money with your travel and landscape photography. Uh, and it seems like everyone's having a difficult time making that decision. So uh, sorry, sorry to make that so difficult on you guys, but they are um, kind of my two, I guess, best-selling courses. So thank you again to everyone that's picked up that course. It's available until Tuesday. And then after Tuesday, you can't buy it until January 1st of next year um, to give all the early adopters a chance to go f- go forth into the world and start creating with the information um, taught in Book More Weddings 2019. Today, what I want to talk about is something that is, um, I would say, pretty important to me. And it's something that I would have changed a little bit looking back. Um, I, I by no means really want to change anything that happened in my life because I'm very happy with the place that I've ended up right now. But um, definitely, I think that the stigma around this specific issue is kind of going away, I think. And essentially what it is is that um, a lot of people have been asking me recently and over the past many years is um, if, if they want to get into photography that they believe that the best way to get into photography in a way that um, like instantly you're going to be successful is to go to school for photography and to spend the years building your skills, building your portfolio, and actually um, like going to classes every day and just living and existing within that space. And while I do know quite a few successful photographers, actually, that um, have gone to school for photography, uh, not specifically weddings or commercial, really, but um, I would say more on kind of the fine arts end of things. And I know a lot of people that have gone to school, and they are successful, and they are doing great things. Um, but uh, I would say 90, maybe even almost 100% of people that I know that are in a specific niche business like weddings or portraits or families uh, and are doing exceptionally well did not go to school for photography at all and just are completely self-taught. There is so much information out there with YouTube that you are able to go and just learn anything that you need to really at any point in time. And if I could go back, so my backstory is uh, that I actually went to school for computer programming and clearly I don't really use a whole lot of that anymore. For a little while I was, uh, I was building my own websites and um, in the MySpace days it was like, it was nice to be able to do all the HTML to like really like brand out your page and make it a lot better than the standard templates. But for the most part, like I would say on a yearly basis, I use those skills maybe three three times, uh, three times a year, maybe less uh, uh, this past year at least. And I think that if I could have repurposed those um, those three or four years into actually just focusing full time on my photography and living and breathing it and going out and networking with people and um, just creating more and more work rather than kind of almost uh, like sidetracking myself with computer programming, because I thought that the, the idea that I had when I was like, um, I guess, 17, uh, going into post-secondary was that I didn't really know what I wanted to do in life. So I figured that I would pick a certain number of like balls to kind of throw up in the air and just like hope that one of them ended up working out. And photography at that time did not seem like it could be a full-time career. I was photographing concerts and people would pay me in t-shirts and there was no real financial 
um, upside to that. And that was not a career that I could envision myself, even though I did really enjoy the work. Um, the other career that I had kind of the, the other ball in the air at that time was I actually got my pilot's license, my private license when I was 16 years old. The, the week that I turned 16, I went and I wrote the test and then was a certified licensed private pilot for a bunch of years. And my, at least my thought process for that, uh, was that I wanted to, again, like maximizing time freedom, like I've talked about in the podcast before, and I really wanted to work as few days as possible and really just kind of accentuate the upside of how much money would be possible for working those few days. And I knew that airline pilots, if you were working commercial for like Air Canada or um, one of the, the bigger airlines in the world, that there was a really significant upside to getting on that level. And my, I guess, the thing that fell off with me there was that you have to really just kind of go somewhere to build hours. Um, so you can either instruct, which I wasn't really too passionate about doing because I was still very, very young. Like as a 16 year old, um, it's going to be a long, long time before somebody takes you seriously as an instructor. Um, for the most part, I would say like the average age of somebody going for their private or their pilot's license is probably somewhere from like 30 to 60, maybe even 60 plus. Um, so as like a 16, 17, 18, 19 year old, I felt that it was going to be very much a challenge for me to be in an instructor role of any sort. Um, so I knew that that wasn't really how I wanted to do it. I really didn't want to move up north and just fly bush pilot. Um, so I kind of let that ball, um, I guess, fall uh, for the time being. And obviously it's still like travel is kind of what became of that, that travel is definitely a passion of mine, but it was not, um, it didn't see its way all the way through to actually becoming an airline pilot like I had originally anticipated. So the other ball that kind of was like, well, I'm good at computers. I can I can program a little bit. I'm fine with HTML, PHP, whatever the, the languages were at that time. And I, I could build stuff. So I was like, this is kind of the natural transition. Like if I want to get a real job, I guess this is the way. And that was just three, um, I guess, four years technically with... Um, when I went back to do a year of advertising. Um, so advertising, I was, uh, I, I completed my computer programming degree and I went back for a single year of advertising. It was a two-year course and I dropped out after after the first year because um, pretty much like the entire course was teaching you how to use Photoshop and steal images from the internet and use them in projects. And for like, I don't know, if if you're resourceful, you can go out and learn everything that's been in, like that was taught in the first year of that course probably in like four days. Um, and I think that that is kind of true with any industry that if you want to get really good at food photography, there is so much content you can consume out there on food photography. Um, and it's like job by job. So if you book something and you're like, oh, I really don't know specifically how to do that, that you can learn everything you need to know specifically about that, um, that niche of photography. The other thing that I would do is just really start connecting with other photographers, um, not necessarily local photographers. The the biggest, um, I guess, kind of key people that I've met and collaborated with are actually people that live kind of all around the world. And this kind of goes back to the credibility hack episode that was a couple of days ago now. And just by like going out to LA and like shooting with Mario and making like a video with him, you can create a lot of credibility for your business as well as just a lot of good portfolio work that if you're willing to network and you're willing to meet people like the internet is a smaller place than ever before that if you're in a Facebook group um, or you're just like following somebody on Instagram that it's so easy to reach out and just make it really lightweight on them to do some sort of a collaboration. Um, obviously picking somebody that's in roughly kind of the same scope as you um, as far as like how, how many followers you have or how much interaction you have um, and finding somebody that like you guys can kind of um, like rise together at the same time. Uh, I feel like that's what builds really, really great relationships. And I think that those are the, the relationships that I look back on in photography and realize that like that we were both at this pivotal moment where we were both like struggling to be successful. And we started booking a few few jobs here and there. And then like things really started to take off. And it's it's a cool thing to be able to experience that with somebody. And it will be something that you remember forever. So um, I would say instead of focusing time and energy on attempting to go to school, to just like start doing it as much as you possibly can, to start learning the things that you want to be doing and start networking with the people uh, and, and the places and the businesses and 
really like there's no rules when it comes to photography. So obviously your skills have to be good and you can learn those skills pretty quickly, um, honestly, on, on the internet, really anywhere. And beyond that, it's like 90% business and really just getting out there and booking the work, which is um, maybe like where I could like book more weddings 2019 can help out or on the Patreon page or like, there's so many other instructors out there as well that if, if you do want to get successful at a, a niche type of photography, that there is, there is a thought leader out there somewhere. And if there's not, maybe that's like, maybe that's your role that you start a YouTube channel and you start to learn this style of photography and you teach other people kind of how you're doing it along the way. And I feel like that is how you build up a personal brand that really is entirely scalable, that it's not limited to the number of weddings that you book. It's now worldwide and pretty much unlimited that if you that if you're teaching on that level if you're teaching on youtube um, if you're getting hired to speak or hired to go to trade shows to speak at booths or to keynote um, that there are so many opportunities with that so uh, would i recommend to go to school for photography no i think you can learn everything that you need to learn Um, and then anything that you don't like in like you can just reach out to photographers and if you offer to pay them good money for their time and their um, their teaching, that they will sit down with you and they will walk you through how they do a shoot. And to make this the easiest and the most lightweight on them, I would say find photographers that are not in your local area and to just like fly, like even if it's like two hours from where you live now, um, that those people are going to be a lot more willing to be completely transparent with their business. Whereas if you're paying somebody locally, um, they're probably going to be hiding a few things because they know how valuable that information is. And if, if you started becoming successful, that you would cut into their bottom line. So uh, find, find people in the outskirts of kind of where you currently live. Offer to pay them money rather than paying a school for money. Um, and I, I really do believe that like even my generation definitely – there is a lot of parental um, pressure and just like, I guess, society pressure to go forth and like go to school, like post-secondary, like you have to do it. And I think that now um, we're kind of moving into this time in the world where we see that those are just businesses that like a university is a business. It's not really there for the betterment of society. It's there to make money um, overall. So if you can kind of see that and understand where, where its value is in the world, um, you can still do collaborations with that university. You can still um, do projects with them, but you don't necessarily need to be spending like eighty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 to go to school there when you can learn everything on your own and then just start your business four hours or four hours, um, four years earlier which I think is something that if I could go back, I would definitely have done. I would have, um, when I was in school, focused more on creating the life that I actually wanted rather than just kind of using school as a temporary distraction. And I think that's where um, I really could have improved at least like where my business is now. Like it would be amazing to be four years in the future of wherever my business is now. And I'm super happy with where it is. Uh, But also like obviously everything gets better every year and that's why, you probably want to be an entrepreneur. You want to work for yourself because next year, like if you if you want to make double the money, that's a possibility when you're working for yourself, and it's not really that high of a possibility if you're working for somebody else. So, those are my thoughts for today. Thank you so much for listening to me here in the garage in Naples. Book more weddings 2019 out until Tuesday, only, and then it's gone for a little while. So, pick it up today. If you are interested in that, comes with a lot of bonuses. Um, helped a lot of people so far. I will see you tomorrow from not a garage in Naples, or maybe it will be. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I. I don't know the future, but it might be a garage. It might not be. We're back to the awkward endings of the podcast. I'll put together a compilation sometime of all the awkward endings of the podcast because this is this is a good one. I think. See you tomorrow. <laughs>